In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to sculpt an arm from scratch. Teaching at university, I always see students overcomplicate the arm. I'm going to break it down into its core fundamentals and only show you the anatomy that really matters. I'll also give you the tips and tricks I use as a character artist in the games industry. Lots of videos are lined up, especially anatomy ones. I even broke my character in making them. So if you feel sorry for me or enjoy free industry tutorials, make sure to subscribe and let's get started with the arm. Okay guys, so today we're gonna create an arm from scratch in ZBrush, and it's gonna be along the lines of this one. The arm, especially the forearm, has lots of muscles in it, it can be quite intimidating. Fundamentally, how I like to look at it is that the arm is just a collection of skin and bones and muscles, and they create certain particular shapes. So if we can master how to create the shapes, we don't have to focus too much on the anatomy. If we look into a couple of references, if you're familiar with my other videos, I like to keep it very simple and just focus on a couple, and I'll slowly introduce them with you, and then we can apply that to the sculpt. When it comes to looking for references, you might see a lot of things like this. These are usually geared more to biological or anatomy students, whereas as you're trying to sculpt the surface of a skin, things like this are a little bit more useful. There's very tenderness and we can see the silhouettes. If you want to learn and understand the muscles and what they're called, then you would focus on these references. The best sort of references for sculptors are these very clear basic ones that break it down into shapes, especially into clear analogies like the chain analogy that we're going to go through and sort of introduce that. Obviously there is lots of bones and muscles in the arm and they all have different names. I only like to focus on two of them, the radius and the ulna, and that's going to be important because when it comes to the forearm mechanics, the forearm's going to twist and that's going to change a lot of the musculature around those bones. So that's important for us. So the way I like to remember these two bones, and it's the only two bones we're going to remember, the ulna and the radius. So with the radius, I like to think of with my thumb, if I rotate this around and the bone that's on my thumb side, I can create a circle. And so I call that the radius of a circle, create your own analogy. And then how I remember the ulna, the ulna is on the pinky side so it's the bone on the forearm that comes this side so this one here I just like to do sort of like a rocking look and it makes a U with my arm and then I can remember that as the ulna so if you're not so confident when it comes to ZBrush and before watching this video I suggest you watch these two videos which are how to create a base mesh bringing things into proportion and dyne meshing together and then I'm going to release videos on the torso the head the legs and so while you're there make sure you subscribe so you receive those videos starting with this key reference we can pinpoint the key proportions thankfully we've got head units here. This section is the upper arm. See I've drawn it here that's about one head unit. The lower arm's also going to be very similar. It's going to be one head. So I'm going to refer to this as the upper arm, this to the lower arm. And then we've got the hand which is almost the head size. It's different depending on different people. And then the shoulder muscle is just the connection where it comes to the main torso. Add that later. So taking that reference we're going to bring it into ZBrush. So what I've got here is the start of the shoulder. It's just a sphere. Duplicate this, bring it down. And this is going to be the head distance. So if you've already got the base mesh character from the last video, I'd insert the head there and just see the scale. You could also use a background reference so you can get a, a picture and draw on top of that or you could use this see-through mode. You can align this up to the previous reference I had which is going to be quite useful. You can line these up, make sure each joint is in the correct location but I can duplicate this sphere again, bring it down to one of the joints at the hand. So I usually like to start with the joints and then build everything around that in the major shapes. So after I've duplicated those spheres, I've just put them at an angle so it's easier for me to sculpt. It's more traditional A pose. And I've also reduced the size of each one of these joints. So they stagger down and stage down because the joints get smaller as you go down with the bones. So the arm we're going to be creating is going to sort of take this form of silhouette. We're going to have biceps of the upper arm and then this is going to flow down into the forearm and down into the wrist. And then when it comes to creating the hand, usually what we do is just have that as a sort of like a reference and then we come and replace it later. So I'm going to make a, an entire video on that because it needs its own video because it's so complicated. Um, so we're just going to focus on the arm for the time being. So the next thing we're going to do is get the major shapes in and we don't have to be thinking about too much references because we can change all the landmarks after. We just need to get the basic structure in. So I'm going to select the, the shoulder joint and then the brush that I like to use, you can append a sphere if you want and, and sort of shape that. But what I like to use is something called IMM Primitive. And then so under IMM Primitive, I would hotkey this. This brush is very useful, but you can bring in all sorts of shapes like spheres and squares. Um, what we're going to use is the capsule up here. And so with the capsule selected, what it allows us to do is basically draw on top of a mesh. And as we draw it and drag it out, it's going to give us this capsule mesh. And that's very indicative of a limb, right? And then we can use it. So what's happened here is the original has been attached to our subtool, so the shoulder joint, it's masked it as we joined it. So that means that when we come to the move gizmo, we can just start to adjust this, hold alt and drag down, and that's going to draw out our gizmo. And if I let go of all, I can then position this. So what I'm going to do is just position it inside of this 
this shoulder joint and then I'm also going to reshape it just so it connects to the elbow joint and so I'm going to bring it down like this just like that um, at this point you can also use the move brush so the move brush is going to be useful we can just sort of shape this and its silhouette the nice thing about this geometry is that it's uh, forcing us to stay with uh, low resolution so for example we be impossible to draw a bicep here because there's not enough geometry so it really focus us uh, down on silhouettes so I'm just going to put this in here obviously with your own arm you understand that the muscle muscles and, and stuff get smaller as they approach a joint so you can just replicate that and potentially if you want to you can add a little bit of an elbow so this shape can just wrap behind uh, the shoulder joint um, and also we can tuck this just underneath the shoulder so what we're going to do is we're going to put muscles on top of this or the deltoids and they're going to wrap around this sphere and we're going to use that as a reference so next we're going to do the exact same so I'm just going to alt click this elbow joint and then I'm going to come to IMM primitive under the brush with the capsule and I'm just going to aim it under here another thing I'm also going to do is look at it from the front end and then obviously the wrist is quite flat it's almost like a, a rectangular shape so I'm just going to push the top in that's going to form the top of our wrist and I'm going to get the underneath side and then just tuck that in so I'm going to do it continuously on each end and that's going to basically squish the joint and then it's going to be more indicative of a wrist Another sort of section I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that this elbow is nicely angled. So I'm just going to bring this up with the move tool and then have that connect to the upper arm. And what that's done is that's created that nice angled joint that we can sort of like work around and put muscles and bones in. So the interest of time, um, I've done the same thing here. I've just inserted a sphere and I've got the move tool to adjust it to look like a bit of like a clenched fist or what you'd see with a traditional mannequin. Um, the areas that I'm looking at here is just so there's a nice kink on the wrist so we can sculpt around that and that can be useful um, when we're creating characters and sort of animating it and as I said we're going to replace this later so next I'm going to move on to creating the the shoulder muscles or the deltoids that wrap around that upper joint so with the deltoid I'm going to get a polysphere and alt select the the upper arm or what we're calling it and I'm going to just draw this out and then the deltoid is going to be quite a large wrapping muscle obviously it depends how musculature or athletic the person is or how much overhead um, weights they're doing so I'm just going to engulf this sphere and I'm going to drag everything out and here I'm using the move brush I'm being quite aggressive with it so I've got quite a large brush and I'm also dragging it quite a distance and then just seeing what result that has on the mesh so with the deltoid it's not this sort of like spherical shape it's actually more like um, multiple chicken breasts or well, one of the uh, favorite analogies that a student said was like a, an upside down radish so make sure you sort of get those references <laughs> but what we're going to do is um, we're going to take the front and this is going to be dragged down to sort of close towards the center of the middle arm and that's going to make sense later when we start to sculpt it um, we also want to look at the back and make sure that that's wrapping around almost to this sort of direction and we're keeping the geometry here where it's connected to the upper arm and um, we're going to do a similar thing with the front of the deltoid and just bring that to the side um, and what I might want to do is just add a pectoral because the arm won't look right unless the the chest or the pectoral is in there with the torso but today we're just sort of like doing a floating arm when it comes to the arm's connection to the body I'm just going to draw over this reference you can see why these ones can be quite bad because all you can see is like musculature and striations can't see very many shapes so so far what we've got is we've got this slim called main arm that we've done we've also drawn this deltoid muscle or the upside down radish shape that's going to come here now it's important to note that every muscle has like a certain amount of connections so you've got one connection at the top and the second connection is leading about halfway up the upper arm so if you ever want to know where to finalize that muscle you're going to be aiming about halfway down here so the pectoral we've also done is kind of this shape now this connection is very important because many people get this wrong so the connections are all along this side of the the inner torso um, but they all finalize in a similar place and basically what they do is they wrap underneath this large muscle or the, the shoulder radish muscle and they're going to slip underneath and then they're going to tuck in just similar sort of space and similar connection but you don't see it when we're sculpting so just so you understand what's going on um, when we start to move the clay so more of an x-ray vision so we have the connections of the pectoral and those are all going in a certain direction and they're inserting just above halfway on the upper arm so that's where they're going to be going and then the deltoid here what we've got is their connections obviously at the top of the shoulder and those are just going to wrap on top 
and also finalize about halfway up the upper arm. So it's important to note where those are sort of directed. So here we're going to translate that and it doesn't have to be mega specific um, because we can't see it because it's all covered by skin. But I'm just going to get the pectoral and then with a move brush, I'm going to bring it roughly into that direction. And then I'm going to get a pinch brush and I'm just going to also brush in that muscle direction. And you can see that it's naturally pinching underneath. Then I'm going to do the same with the deltoid. So this upper arm is all one sub object up here and that's because we made them together but right now they're in different poly groups so if you press shift f you get the poly groups options and if you press control and shift and click you can basically get the option to individually select that asset so basically what i'm going to do is control and shift here and then that's going to isolate this section and i'm going to do the same technique so i'm just going to get a pinch brush and just sort of make that upside down radish shape and then I can press control and shift click off to the canvas it brings it back and then I can position this so it's more accurate to um, the references that we were looking at another useful thing as well because this is all one sub tool um, when we use the move tool everything's going to move in tandem so the upper arm and the deltoid but if we just want to move each limb independently we can use something called move topological and then that's going to move the thing that we touched the first um, so we can move them each independently but keep them on the same sub tool so now we've fixed that area, I'm going to focus on the joints and how these two limbs connect together. Um, a common mistake that I see is the sausage, the sausage effect when people create limbs. They sort of draw them like this. There's going to be two orbs that converge into a point and then it gives this sort of like um, sausage effect. With the arm, think of it more of the analogy of like a chain. So the upper limb is going to be the first link in the chain and then the lower limb is going to be the second link of the chain. And obviously that's rotate 90 degrees so it can connect. So if we're trying to replicate that analogy, what I'm going to do is get move topological. And I'm going to tap on the the upper um, the upper sorry the lower arm here. And I'm just going to drag this all the way up to the top, and it's going to overlap the sphere that we did, and it's give a, going to give us that chain effect. Uh, I'm also going to do it to the lower section, and you can move this sphere out the way if you want if it's a bit annoying. But I'm just using that as a as a location for the joint. And then I'm going to get this section, and I'm also just going to increase the size of it just so it expands out a little bit. And then because this is a chain, I'm going to get this side and I'm just going to push it in just like that. And again, we can hide the orb so it gives us the inside pit of your forearm. And uh, we're going to sculpt on this after and fix all the, the sub shapes. But we're just getting the basic down right now. I'm going to alt click on the upper arm or the bicep. And obviously this is a very spherical, um, a cylindrical shape right now. But if we want to introduce that chain effect, what it's going to involve is just pinching it from the front side. So I'm going to get, get it like this, pinch it down. And then because the chains connect, I'm also going to drag it down slightly as well. And especially around the joint or the orb of the joint just there. So we've got two, two similar shapes. Um, the first one is the, the upper arm and that's going to be quite pinched. So if I isolate it here and press control and shift, I can hide certain parts of the mesh. That means I can reduce the size of this and turn it into that chain chain look. So it's nice and flat there. I can flatten it from the base as well and then control shift click off to the side, bring everything back and unsolo it so I can see it. So at this point, the uh, we've reached the limit of what our geometry can handle. Now we want to make the sub shapes. So what I'm going to do is alt click on each one of the limbs and then I'm going to come down to split and then use group by split. What that's going to do is going to split these into two sub objects so that whenever I alt click on it, it's only going to select those. Uh, I'm also going to do the same for the upper limb. So that's going to separate the joint that we have there. So come to groups under split, come to group split. So what might be an idea is to put these all into a folder so we can bring them back later. So I'm going to go to new folder, just call this joints, and then I'm going to drag all the hidden objects into there. So when it comes to it, we can re-show them. So now we're going to start reshaping them. I'm going to select each object and dynamesh it. This is why it's important to split them all first. So if I come down to geometry, I can come down to dynamesh. Really good to keep it as a low resolution at the moment with each one. And remember that dynamesh is based on the scale of your object. So this resolution slider does, it doesn't really mean anything. As long as you can see quite large polygons on your screen, then that's usually a good indication. So first we're going to work with the upper arm. I'm just going to get a very large brush and then hold smooth. So it smooths out all that information. Now with the shape of the upper arm, we've got the front side, we've got something called the biceps that's how you sort of like flex your arm and then to extend your arm we've got something a group of muscles called the triceps and those are located up here 
Now, the basic shape of the upper arm is we're going to aim quite high and then we're just going to drag this outwards um, and we're also going to increase its mass. So you can do that with the move tool. I prefer to do it with the move tool because I'm just sticking with one brush and I'm basically going to go either side of it and just increase it and then change the angle to increase its size this way. Um, you might find the inflate brush is quite good. So if you go B, I, N, the inflate brush is wherever you press, it's just going to make that very bulbous. So that's an easy way of creating muscles and mass. So you could use that. For the time being, I'm just going to use the move tool because I find it easier to adjust silhouettes. Now taking it to the front of the arm, what we're going to do is we're going to tuck in the topmost part here. We're just going to tuck it in underneath and this is going to form the initial shape of the bicep. And then we're also going to do the same on the other end. And that's going to create this sort of like arching shape. Now, when it comes to the bicep, um, people are used to seeing it flexed. So it's very bulbous and round. When it's relaxed, it's actually quite flat. So the silhouette we're looking for here is quite a straight line that goes straight down. So almost like, um, almost like a very long rectangle. If you want to at this stage, you can also support and bring the bicep out a little bit. So instead of sculpting the bicep, what I like to do is get the dam standard. And I'm just going to get one individual line. And I'm going to bring it all the way down the upper arm. And then I'm going to do the same on the inside. So I've tried to break it down into its most simple steps so, so it's easy to follow. Um, now, if you do these incisions, it's going to come out nice when you start to smooth it. Next bit we're going to do is we're going to do the same for the tricep, but this time we're going to stop about halfway up the arm. So first I'm going to make a side incision like this, and then I'm going to, like we have done with the, the bicep, I'm just going to lead a line down here, and then that's going to lead all the way to the elbow joint. So with the elbow joint, what I also like to do if we solo this, I usually just put, like to put a bit of clay there. So with the clay brush, so it's building out. Now that's not accurate anatomy. I just use it as a landmark reference, then we can smooth out later. So here I can position the elbow and I definitely know it's there. Um, now, what we can also do is just be a bit more anatomically correct with this. So if we get something like a clay tubes, what I'm going to do is aim at this section. And I'm going to radiate out with the direction of my brush, and that's going to create some nice uh, muscle lines. And it's going to accidentally do a nice shape for the tricep muscle. So that's the basic shape. And you can see how from the incision we've done, there's almost this two tiered system that goes down. And we're going to we're going to readjust these all later because they're a bit they're a bit out of place, but we just want to get the landmarks in for the start. Another incision you can make is to really define the back of the tricep. So what I'm going to do is because we've made this radial mass up here and we can go into the anatomy later, but I just want to focus on the shapes, get the damn standard. And I'm just going to make a sort of like an arch shape down here. And that's going to bring out the, uh, the mass depending on how musculature the character is. So now if we look at it from the front, the front arm silhouette is actually made by the tricep. So whenever you see someone's arm and they, they put their arm out and you can see their silhouette, it's usually created by the tricep or the back of the arm. So all this space in the center is quite confusing when you first start out. We've got something called the brachialis muscle. I wouldn't worry about it. You just need to focus on what shape it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make use of masking with the lasso tool. I'm just going to protect the muscle that we made on the front, the bicep, and I'm also going to protect the tricep area. So just selecting those parts. Now this area, while there is muscle there, it's, it's actually quite flat, uh, might be different on bodybuilders because they're, they're trying to actually uh, select that muscle and work it out. So what I'm going to do is get the trim dynamic and then from the side, I'm just going to brush down it and that's going to flatten the arm. And it's also going to give us the shape the nice shape of the arm that we're looking for. And because we mask the tricep, what you see that's going to happen here is from the front, it's going to start to appear and that's more correct. Now, what we can do as well, is we hold control and click on the canvas, that's going to invert the selection. And then we can now start to bring the tricep out um, just so we can just so we can see it from the front. And that's more correct. Uh, from this angle, we can also just work with the bicep. So if you think of muscles, they're quite large in the center. And then as they turn into tendons and insert onto the bones, they get a lot smaller. So if we want to replicate that, we can get a pinch brush. I'm just going to pinch the brush at the top here. And I'm also going to pinch it at the bottom. Um, now the bicep has very interesting incisions down to the forearm, but we'll get onto that later. So with that sort of brachialis shape made, we've got some nice um, incisions here. What I'm going to do is very lightly hold shift and smooth this all away. So I'm still focusing on mass 
proportions and silhouettes. We don't want to get two inch cut with the muscles. So you can spend as much time on this as you want, sort of just shaping it. And obviously you'd have references to the side to make sure that it's looking correct. Um, next thing I'm going to do is uh, sort out this deltoid muscle. So I'm just going to get, again, a very large brush and smooth it down and then just make sure that the incision is coming in here. Um, right now, the upper arm is looking a bit small. So I'm just going to increase the size of it so it tucks in because um, obviously we're focusing on skin. We're not focusing on the muscle. We're not making like this attack on Titan creature. Um, with the deltoid, again, it pinches into a tenderness area. So I'm going to get the pinch brush and it sort of vanishes into the upper arm. And then obviously, depending on the person, has different, different sort of scales. With the shape, we can adjust a bit of the shape here. So what we've got usually with the deltoid, instead of this like round perfect shape, it usually is split into three sections. So along these sorts of lines, and it'll be different depending on each person. So we're going to try and sort of replicate that first. So come on here, approaching it from the front, I'm just going to bring these down and I'm going to try and make more of that shape, initial shape that we had. I'm also going to make it a lot smaller. Um, a useful brush for this is also trim. So if you want to reduce the size of it, we can get the trim brush and then just stroke in the direction of the muscle. And that's good for creating a particular planes uh, or the shape of of masses of muscle so the shape i'm going for from the side is sort of like this arching shape um, usually what you find people are usually overdeveloped on the front side of the deltoid or or this area um, and then on the back it's actually quite flat but in general i just want this very basic arching shape for the time being so now we're going to move on to the lower limb. And uh, right now, if I, I zoom out, this is turning into quite a slender character. So we can change that after once we put all the landmarks in. But as I said, we're, we're always focusing on the landmarks and the silhouettes first, and then we can start to adjust things. So to put in some primary shapes, um, if you look at your own wrist, you can observe that it's quite flat on the upper side and the lower side. And that's because it's just an, an array of tendons. We have uh, flexors and extenders. So if you think about extending your fingers, that's the top side of your forearm. That's all the tendons that are pulling your fingers out. And then the flexors is how you draw your fingers in or flex, you know, like a bicep flex. Those are on the underside of your forearm. And those tendons are pulling your fingers in. So we're going to try and replicate that in sculpt form. So usually what I like to do is just get a very large trim brush and then we can trim down the front side like this. We're also going to trim down the underside. And so the way I'm going to look at it this, I'm going to look at it from the front and just see what effect it's having. So it's obviously shortening this area, turning it into that sort of like chain look. You can also smooth this out. And what it what it sort of naturally creates is these these further objects up here. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the dam standard and then we can isolate it here. And basically, I'm going to draw this long line that comes across and it wraps down and it's going to come over here. And I'm just going to lead it and make it vanish there and smooth it away. So when I bring it back, what it's giving us is this sort of like arched muscle. And uh, we're going to tuck the bicep further down into this pit that's created. What I also like to do is create this sort of Y shape on the inside. So we've got that sort of shape here. And then that gives us a nice little socket to get the upper arm and then just bring this down and increase its size to tuck inside. Another incision I like to do with the dam standard is basically on the alternate side. And this is sort of towards near the elbow. So again, we can draw this, this elbow really large landmark in. And then with the dam standard, I can bring a line all the way down here. And it's going to wrap and finish to where we made the flat surface of the arm. So again, I'm trying to break it down into its most simple forms. Um, if I was sculpting this, I would be going all over the place. I'd be going to the top of arm, fixing that, coming down again. Um, but if we take it one step at a time, it's a little bit easier. Now with this top muscle, um, what you usually find is this is going to be quite sharp and obviously tenderness we're thinking about pinching it so I'm gonna brush in the direction of the muscle and then it's gonna create this sort of like nice pinched line and just similar to like it was with the deltoid this is gonna terminate somewhat up the arm and it's creating this nice initial chain analogy that we're doing. So we've got the top chain, which is linking to the top here with the forearm. And then we've got the bicep, which can be considered the bottom of the chain that's linking into the underarm. So it's this nice little overlapping connection. Um, you could simulate that with your fingers if you put them together. That's the sort of um, shape that we're going to. You can also do the same for the, the bottom side of the forearm. So we can just sort of like bring this and make sure it's uh, vanishing into the top side of the upper arm. Or sorry, the bottom side of the upper arm. And if it's looking a bit funny, just always smooth it away and focus on um, silhouettes. 
So I'm just going to tuck these in a little bit. Now there's going to be a lot of different um, features of the, of the underarm. So it does on the front side of the silhouette, it pinches a little bit here. So what I'm going to do is going to get the move brush and just drag that out a little bit. And what we're aiming for is almost like a, a bit of a diamond shape here. So one side there and one side here. And a similar sort of effect happens on the bottom side, but this time it's a, a little bit lower. So we're just going to make that quite large diamond shape and then we're going to smooth everything out. Okay, so now we're going to focus on the back side of the arm or the underarm. Now what I'm going to do is, uh, and it's quite useful to think about how the hand's connecting right now. So if you remember the radius, you know, with your thumb you can make a rotation. That side of the bone is on the inside of the thumb. So with the clay brush, like we did with the elbow, we can just make a very large bulbous area and that's going to simulate the bone. Now we're going to do the end of the ulna. So it's kind of like that U shape. And so it's on the little finger side, the pinky side. And we're going to do another one there. I'm not focusing on the accuracy of where it's placed. I just want to see it first and then I'll position it later. So now we know there's sort of like a forearm bone there. Now I've, what I've seen from here, I just want to affix the silhouette. The silhouette's very straight. That's not what's happening with the forearm. So towards the top of the forearm, what we're going to do is just going to bring this out so it's got that large musculature shape. And then on the lowest section, it turns into usually your ulna and your bones, right? So we're just going to make that quite square and flat like that. Now with the back of the arm, usually what I like to do is just round it off ever so slightly so it's not uh, completely a straight bone, but it does have that sort of like slight adherence to a curvature and then on the underside or the bottom half that's going to be nice and straight and lead straight into into the um, arm so if i look here um, there's a bit of a, a bulbous area that's formed don't know where it came from but what we're going to do is just get the trim brush and i'm just going to trim down in that direction down the arm and then that's going to smooth this area so we're going to work on the back side, so the elbow towards this bony area. So first what I like to do is get the clay tubes brush. We're just going to make a line that leads all the way down. And uh, if you feel on your own arm, it's actually quite hard there. So it's, it's very bony. It depends how musculature you are. Um, I'll show you a little trick that I like to do when it comes to sculpting this. So really focus on getting the shape down first, but I'm just going to dive straight into it. So I'm going to get the damn standard. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from the bone or the wrist, and I'm going to draw it all the way up to here and it's going to finish and fall short just of the elbow. So we've got the, the elbows right there. And then what I like to do is just make a, a Y shape like this. So that's got that formation. And then what I'll do is I'll get a very large smooth brush and I'm just going to smooth over it. And then as you can see, that gives us a vague indication of a particular amount of shapes that are going on there. So another thing that happens with the connections around the elbow, this sort of area just here, I'm going to mask it. It's a very deep and cavernous area. And the reason that that happens is we've got, got the elbow, elbow bone here, and then we've got a large muscle that wraps up there. And the bits in between, there's not much that exists. So it's usually quite deep. So to simulate that, you could keep it masked if you want to. Could be useful. I'm just going to get the damn standard. And I'm going to draw some deep lines radiating down. And if you can see, it's giving us support where we originally did that Y shape. Um, and I'm just going to lead it down, just have it feather off into non-existence. Um, so down here, there's there's many tendons. But if we're thinking about the surface of the skin, um, we don't have to actually insert any muscles in there. So after that's done, you can sort of like smooth it over. So here I'm going to just fix some things that are annoying me. Um, I can't help but avo uh, not avoid them. So basically the back of the triceps a weird sort of shape. So I'm going to get the clay tubes and I'm going to brush in this direction. I'm just going to enhance the size of it and then I'm going to smooth it out. And I'm going to do this similar to the the, um, the biceps, but with this technique, I'm going to cross hatch it. So I'm going to go side to side. And what that's going to do is going to make a very nice cylindrical shape and I can smooth that out. Uh, also, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flatten this section so it's um, it's a lot more flat like we had with the brachialis. And then I'm going to bring out the tricep a bit more with the damn standard and just to create this sort of shape. Um, so it's it's poking out a bit like that. And the same with the underside. And what we can also do is bring back a bit of the original shape we had here, you know, where we drew two damn standards along the line. And I just want to have that um, that form resting a bit more. So I'm not going to smooth it as much. And then we can come back to this later. Next section I'm going to do is I really want to define this muscle. So what I'm going to do is going to get a dam standard because we've already created the pit here. I'm going to take it from the top where we pinched it. And I'm just going to continue to wrap it around and think about this muscle as wrapping around the two bones that are underneath here. So I'm going to wrap this around and just make sure that that silhouette is holding. I'm going to do the same on the inside. Um, if you want to bulk up that muscle, I'd come to clay tubes and I'd just brush in this direction, almost like a, a twisted flannel. 
if you think about it. That's going to give you a nice shape um, for that side of the arm. Now, usually um, we can fix the, the bony area. A little trick that I like to do is just look at it from the top. I'm going to get the dam standard and we're just going to wrap underneath each side of the bone and let, let's get rid of that area just so you can almost see that it's a physical bone in itself. Um, and then as we wrap around it, we can smooth out and it's going to have a nice, nice transition. So I'm just going to smooth that out. Now the next section we can do is uh, just sort a little bit of the the um, the hand out. So what I'm going to do is dyno mesh that, re dyno mesh it. I'm going to get a very harsh trim dynamic, and I'm just going to make a flat surface on this side so it shows us um, sort of like the angle of the the fist. And I'm also going to just reduce this. I'm going to roughly create something that looks like a fist. Um, I wouldn't sculpt this too much. It's just so you can see um, how it's basically going to look because we're going to dyno mesh this all together and then we're going to smooth it all as one so as long as it's not looking too big another important area is the underside of the arm it's usually abused quite a lot um, so what i like to do especially with game characters is make that area quite a deep pit and that's going to be useful for animators and stuff so i'm just going to pinch the pectoral here and make sure that's sort of like wrapped under and then with the upper underside of the arm i'm going to get a trim brush and just flatten that out and you can eventually put some muscle striations in there but they're usually hidden by sort of like gravity and fat. Um, so always look at a distance from an arm. I'd say that this is looking very slender. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get the move brush and we're gonna make this guy a little bit more muscly. So that involves um, just getting the move brush and clicking on the outside of the silhouette where you see, and then you can change its form. And this is, um, you're just gonna use some references. So right now I'm not, I'm being quite naughty because I'm not using any references. I'm just sort of um, trying to re remember what the arm looks like. And so either side of it, I'm dragging left and right. And this is just bulking it up. Um, if you wanted to bulk up the muscle itself, then maybe you want to use one of the inflates. Um, so right now the wrist is looking quite small. So I'm also going to increase the size of that and just bring it back and forth like this. So as I was doing the underarm pit, I thought it'd be a bit confusing if there wasn't a torso there because it's hard to see things in comparison and sort of like scale them up. So I've just quickly added a, a torso here. And now comes the fun part of the arm where we connect it all together and smooth it over and refine it as skin. So I'm going to get each element and you can spend as long as you want on these, but I'm just going to go straight into it. So I'm going to select the uh, topmost of the stack in here. So this happens to be the upper arm. And then if I click on each one of these, I can see that I've got four units, the hand, the shoulder and the lower arm. So topmost of the stack under sub tools, I'm going to come over to merge and then I'm going to go merge down and I'm going to do that three times and it's just going to merge all those together. So now these are all merged together. They're all on one sub tool. But if I press shift F, you'll see that they're all floating objects. So if I go to move topological, I can move all these into Independently. So now that they're all one sub object, what we can do is use the Dynamesh feature. So I'm going to hold control and I'm just going to draw a square off to the canvas. And what that's going to do is going to bind the mesh together and then that means it's going to act as our skin. So at this point, what I'd like to do is just get a very heavy smooth brush or a very large one. I'm just going to feather over and almost eradicate um, any sort of features that accidental features that we've put in. And then this means we can focus on um, the connections of the muscles and basically how the skin is looking. So just smooth over anything that's looking a bit too rough. You sort of want a blur blurry representation of an arm and this is going to form the basis where we can start to sculpt on top of. So I'm just going to smooth this out. Okay, so looking from a distance, um, the thing that I would sort of like approach next is again the silhouettes. So what I'm trying to focus on here is and looking is that the silhouettes are quite extreme. So if I draw on top of this, you'll see we've got a silhouette that's like this. Um, and it's actually quite bumpy. When it comes to normal references in actual anatomy, uh, these bumps are very subtle. You almost can't see them. So when you're first starting out, it's very common. You want to see that um, that form and intricacies that you've studied. But when it comes down to the actual piece, it's a lot more subtle than that. So try and make those um, turns very obtuse and very minor. So applying that to the mesh and just looking at the border of the elements, I'm just going to reduce how much is being applied and how, how sharp these angles are happening. So I'm going to make them a little bit more smooth, especially when it comes to organics. Um, unless you're this ripped person that's very dehydrated, it's, uh, it's rare that you're going to have these sorts of angles. So I'm just going to reduce the angles slightly and you'll look, I'm focusing on the shadow areas. You can also change the material. Sometimes I like to use one that's called uh, basic outline or I believe there's also outline thin. So that really highlights where your silhouettes are. 
So for example, we can bring out the forearms and I know that up here, this section points out a little bit further than it does on the bottom side here. So we've got that sort of like tear drop shape and uh, the wrist is reading well. It's reading like a wrist and maybe we just want to put a little bit more of a kink so we can see the transition down to the, to the hand there. Now the top, the, uh, the deltoid is sort of losing itself a little bit. So I'm just going to introduce those um, square elements that we went across. So I'm just going to square that off a bit. I'm also going to look at it from different angles. So making sure the bicep isn't busting out too much. I can take it from the bottom side. I want this to be nice and flat. And then like we did at the start, just making sure that the tricep is coming out towards the top of the arm and making that, that sort of silhouette. Now the shoulder is pretty good. It's we've got like quite a nice transition there. It's a nice shoulder. Um, make sure that the inside pit of the arm, where this sort of interaction is happening, you could almost draw a straight line, and it will lead to the outside of the elbow. So just making sure that the bones are selected in in the right area. So now when it comes to sculpting, I think we're going to bring out a little bit more of the musculature. So we're going to go through this again. We'll, we'll probably start from the deltoid and work the way down. So the shoulder is really split up into two sections. Um, the major shape that we're looking Looking at from the top here. What I like to do is go with the V shape or this shape that comes down. It usually pinches and tapers off like this and then comes around and it's going to attach to the back side of the joint. And that's going to be important because that's how we move our arm backwards. It's how we move our arm forwards. So if we look, we've got incision points like here, here and here where the three muscles are connected and they all terminate around this direction. And that gives us our arm mechanics. Um, so three sections, roughly they're going to be split up into sections like this. So one, two and three. Now from the front back and side I'm going to replicate that but just so you understand that basic analogy we'll take it from there and refine it later. Okay so trying to replicate that shape we're just going to get the move tool and then we're going to move and approach it from this angle. So we're going to replicate that sort of shape. Look at it from the bottom. Maybe this is getting a little bit wobbly, but the brush strokes we're going to do are going to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is just very quickly with the damn standard, roughly insert a landmark, which splits the muscles into three pieces. So one section is there and I'm going to have the other section here. For you guys, it might just be easier to split it directly like that, just so it's in thirds. Usually the front one's bigger, the middle one or lateral is um, sort of mid medium size and then usually the rear is um, not as big. So with the clay tubes, what I like to do is just brush in the direction of the muscle. So we know where the incision points are, one up here, one down there. I'm just gonna stroke in that direction. And they're gonna be elongated ones. So I'm gonna make sure I complete it each time, right? So it's gonna go like this. If you're trying to bulk up this muscle, maybe you wanna do some more in the center and then that gives it more of a shape. But for this, I'm just focusing on, on very light ones. We can do the medial one right in the center and then we can do the one near the rear. So again, just brushing in that direction. Um, I'm not focusing too much on accuracy. I just want sort of like information in there. Sometimes what I like to do is well get the dam standard and then just do these quite intense flicks. And then so when it melts back onto the torso and we, we also do a dynamesh, it sort of like translates a little bit better. Um, and then whenever I do this, I want to see, depending on how ripped the person is, we can get the dam standard and then just draw a leading line. And then that makes sure that the shapes are separated from each other. So we've obviously got that that upside down radish shape. So sometimes I like to leave it unsmooth just so I can see, get an idea of where the muscles are. Um, or you could just get a very large brush and smooth it out. But I usually leave that to the end. So how that connection works with um, the torso, so this is going to be important. The, the front one we made, that's going to sort of like terminate here and it connects to a a bone or a clavicle, I don't want to go too in deep in depth with it, but you can feel sort of like it's incision and it's just after uh, where the pec is going to be intersecting. The central one is going to be quite wide away and it's what gives that um, that front look. If you ever look at front at your references, there's going to be a bit of a shelf there and that's created by the me medial one and the sort of like bones inter interaction with like neck muscles. And then the rear one is uh, usually quite small. I like to reduce this size and have it sort of like tuck, tuck away uh, beneath here. And that's going to lead into the area sort of near the scapula or just basically like this, this general. So moving on from the delta, we're going to now do the tricep and the basic anatomy of this, um, if we focus on sort of like the shoulder joint and this area here is also going to be important. This is a very tenderness structure. I'm going to use this as a basis point to basically like radiate out. So all the muscle fibers are going to go in in these sorts of directions. And the arrows I've drawn here are roughly a representative of how many muscles there are because it's the tricep. Obviously, we have a tri meaning three. That means three sets of muscles. So roughly what it's going to indicate is we've got very large sections up here. 
and it's going to tuck right underneath the deltoid and sort of like integrate with the back muscles. We've got another one here. It's usually quite s small and stocky. It's going to go in this direction. And the second one's sort of like going to come up into this direction or more like that. And then the third one is going to like around here. It leads down a bit. Now, if I draw numbers onto that, so we've got one, two, and three. And those are going to be different depending on many factors. So the person is, how muscly they are, genetics, if they're rotating their arm slightly, if their scapula is out of place. So this can all get a bit wacky, but as long as you understand the fundamentals of it. Okay, so translating that into the sculpt, what I like to do is just draw that elbow point and then with cross hatching just make sure that that this is very refined and nice and straight and then from there just like the sun we're gonna radiate outwards and i'm not focusing on um the muscles just yet i'm just focusing on the direction now the way i like to create each independent muscle so one two and three i just spend a little extra time there while i'm brushing in a direction so if you, as you can see it's almost bringing out this extra section and then i can do the same for the other section so i i've completely bypassed this part and by doing that it creates this nice sort of like incision so i'm not even using any damn standard or anything so now i can brush in that direction skip the incision move on to the third muscle and then sort of make it bleed back down here and it's going to vanish into the skin uh, depending on how much the person is flexing so as you're sculpting obviously you're adding muscles this person is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger you'll eventually track it down and smooth it down so that's what's going to happen um, an important part of this section i usually like to do is a very defined damn standard brush line and then that's going to lead nicely so we can connect um, the forearm muscles so moving on to the bicep, uh, if we look from the front, if you remember, the front silhouette is our tricep. And so we've got a tick mark there. And then because this is a big character, the brachialis is sort of um, coming just there. But at least we can see the tricep, which is which is good. So now onto the bicep. The bicep's a little bit easier. So by mean two, there's two sections to the muscle, but we don't really see that for normal characters. So the overall shape is a basic cylinder and it's going to come all the way down here. And so we're kind of replicating that that cylinder shape and then the only difference that we have is that it gets a little bit more bulbous towards the center so i'm going to show you how that that is affected and because it's it's uh, two muscles they sort of lead off and they have very interesting connections so there's two tendons that come up here they integrate with this shoulder very very interesting and then down here the tendon leads off a little bit to the side it creates some form of um, 3d structure which we're going to integrate but that's sort of like the basic of the two now if it's a very very ripped character this muscle can sometimes split in two and you'll see a, a slight incision there but we're not going to put it on this one so starting to sculpt what i usually like to do is just get the mask pen and then what we're going to do is we're going to protect the deltoid area and that means we can tuck the bicep underneath uh, and you could also do that with the tricep if you wanted to do it so what I'm going to do is going to get a very big move brush and I'm going to look from the side. And I'm just going to make sure that that's nice and deep inside of the character. Um, obviously, we'd have skin that sort of like blends it away, but at least I know that's a starting point. Uh, I'm also going to get the damn standard and reintroduce what we had already smoothed out, which is a long line down here. And if you can see, that's starting to round off our bicep. Now, if I solo it, I'm also going to do it on the inner side like that. Now, if I wanted to make this bigger, again, what I could do is the cross hatching technique is just go like this and I'm going to spend a little more extra time in the center and it's going to create this slight squared shape so one two and three and with the third i'm actually going to tuck this in further so i'm going to get the the pen tool I'm going to protect this part of the the forearm or the chain that we were doing and then i'm going to come with the move brush and i'm just going to push this in and make sure that that's tucked in quite nicely so if you imagine and look at your own arm as soon as your bicep turns into the joint it sort of uh, vanishes away and turns quite flat and that's the effect that we're trying to go for so from this angle we've got three stages we've got the deltoid that overlaps it and we've also got the forearm muscle that's coming up now as we're sort of up here we're working with two at the same time um what i like to do is just get this forearm muscle and make sure it terminates where we create this line just behind the tricep um now i don't have to explain the anatomy behind that just uh, sort of sort of follow along that sort of technique and it's going to look good at the end of the day so we're going to brush in the muscle direction like that and then this is all going to blend off into itself because it's just um skin so with the uh, the bicep muscle what you can do as well is you can get a damn standard and then just lead the line down here and just make sure it leads into the center of this pit then that's going to create like quite a nice shape when it comes to smoothing so what you can do as i said the tendon was quite strange with its attachment to um the forearm so what i like to do is just get clay tubes brush 
And on the bottom side of the bicep, I'm just going to do a couple of lines like this. And then I'm going to smooth it back up into the bicep. And that creates kind of like a nice transition. And then when smoothing, I just smooth down lengthways on the bicep. And then that means it keeps that nice um, transition here, that kind of like effect where the bicep's popping out. Um, at this point, you can also just adjust the brachialis in sort of like this no man's land region, and you can push that in. Or if you want to go more in depth in it, look how that muscle is sculpted. Um, depending, you can sort of like bring it out a little bit and then just make sure it's popping out. But again, that's a, that's a very bodybuilder type so now moving on to the forearm, going to go a little bit into the technicals of it, but don't worry if you don't know any of the names of it. So obviously we've got the older and the radius. And when you're twisting your forearm, it's going to make the muscles all twist around each other and it creates different shapes. So when we're doing an A pose, usually the wrist is in a form of pronation. So that just means it's kind of like twisting forwards. And what happens is it means that the two bones twist across each other and it can changes the complexity of the muscle. So for what for us, what that means is uh, we've got a brachioradialis, which is basically one section of the forearm. We're going to split it in two. We're going to split it into the top and the bottom just so it's nice and easy. So as you see the palms are facing forwards for this person but as it rotates what's going to happen is that upper side or the brachioradialis is going to switch around almost like 90 degrees so the way I like to um, sort of like think about that so I don't have to always keep, keep on looking at references we've got the upper side of the the forearm and it's wrapping all the way down here and I'd like you to think of it in terms of start points and end points. So we've got one start point here at the top. And then the second start point, if it's rotating forwards, it's just going to be about 90 degrees off. So the second point, if we come 90 degrees, it's going to be here. So that's all you have to remember. And then we're going to do the transition of the muscle and the shape there. So with this, what it means with a damn standard, what I'm going to do is just going to draw a line up here just to separate it from the upper arm slightly. And then with the clay tubes, I'm going to wrap it round here. And we're sort of aiming in this area down here. And then with this muscle, it's quite nice because it almost vanishes back into the wrist. So we don't have to do all that, that sort of like tenderness connections. So this is also quite a big muscle, brachioradialis. So what I'm going to do is get the damn standard and I'm going to follow it on the outside edge as well. And I'm just going to make that nice and deep. And then at which point it interacts with the wrist bones, it sort of like fat vanishes and wraps around and gets quite tight. So I just like to smooth that off into nothingness. So I'd keep this, I'd keep this quite deep and I'd keep that there. And then that's giving us that sort of uh, twisted effect. You can also enhance it by, if you're looking on where the bicep connects, we can sort of draw this twisted line down here and it's going to lead to the front of the wrist. And what that's going to do is it's just going to give us the indication that these muscles and these bones are twisting. So if you look there, it's kind of like splitting it in two. So we've got the upper section and the lower section. So you can support that with a bit of a, a bony landmark. So the radialis, you know, with, with the thumb, we can just pop it out there a little bit and then smooth it back in. And then that's giving us, giving us an effect. And we can also do the reverse side and then just sort of like bring that out with the ulna. Um, I'm going to flatten the wrist here as well, quite harshly in between the two bones that we just made. So just have that as a nice flat surface. And that's going to translate quite well um, from the front side. So now this is starting to look a bit more like a wrist with muscles twisting over it. Um, we also have the underside of um, the forearm and the muscles interaction there. Usually what I like to do is keep this quite simple. So what I'll do is just make sure that the, the silhou silhouette is adequate from the front. Um, so it's coming out here and arching back in. And then from the underneath side, I just like to draw a very faint uh, line with the dam standard and bring it back into the center center of the wrist. So it's arching all the way down there and terminating down here. So here's, here's all the sort of like tenderness areas. And then on the back side, what I like to do is just come towards where the elbow joint is. So I'll just highlight the muscle with a with a mask here or the arrangement of muscles and, and all sorts. And what I like to do is just get a damn standard brush just from the top, make it past the elbow joint. And then if you remember, we made this little Y shape previously. I'm just going to sort of like terminate it there and let it vanish into itself. And then I like to smooth that all out again. So now we can get a little bit more complicated with this. So obviously you remember that this section is a very bony area. Uh, if you want to sort of like moitize someone in the face, you'd use that, that side of your forearm. Um, what we're going to focus on for this bit is all the extensors. So it's how you spray your fingers out. It's how you extend your fingers. There's a couple of muscles in there and they only really pop out when you reach out at something. So what I'm going to do is uh, get damn standard. I'm going to draw a line that leads from here and then finishes on this side of the wrist and then 
towards the elbow side, I'm going to get another line and make it come all the way down to this side of the wrist. What that's naturally going to make is this sort of feature here, and we can enhance that with the clay tubes. I'm just going to very gently brush down this section, and it's going to be quite wide up here and quite rounded depending on, on the position, and then it's gonna get flatter the closer it gets to the wrist. So just try and interpret that, and then we can smooth it out after. Now, if it's a very um, muscly person or they are reaching out with their fingers, what we'd usually do is get the damn standard, and we wanna split this muscle into two. And the way I do that is just get one damn standard and let it come all the way down, and then it's just gonna sort of vanish it as well. And then I'm just gonna smooth that out slightly, and just make sure that this this section here is nice and deep and nice and tight, and that's gonna give a, give a cool effect. Um, if we look at a reference here, I believe there is one with this character who's really gripping onto something. Um, the muscles are working hard. But you can see around the elbow joint here. The elbow joint there is obviously very bony. We've got a bony area here. We've got the soft muscle that wraps around from the forearm and it's sort of connected into the top side of the tricep. And then this is just like a very deep chasmy area, a very bony area. So you want to go quite deep with that. At this point, you might want to sort of give an indication of where knuckles could be. Just give that nice transition effect, maybe get a trim just to show where that, that could like rotate, get a trim on this side. And now you're starting to see what's coming out. We've got a bit of a, a thumb here and the fingers that are wrapping around. So the reason you do this is just so you can see the reference in proportion um, and then we'd replace that arm later. Okay, so at this point, what I do is um, I just maybe go up some subdivisions. I mean, some Dynamesh, so give it a little bit more resolution if I like the shape of things. And then I'd come over and brush, be very tactical where you're smoothing and just brush on top and smooth out the sections. Um, Maybe there's a bit too much resolution here because it's it's hard to smooth. So I'm spending extra time smoothing these areas. Um, but as you can see, as I start to smooth it, it's starting to look a bit more like skin. And so these muscles are vanishing away and it's almost like the skin is wrapping around them. So like we were before, we'd be quite aggressive with a broad smooth. Now that we've added resolution, we just want to zoom in a little bit further and be a bit more tactical. And so just focusing on the big, big forms, uh, letting the deep areas rest. So I'm not going to smooth those because I want them to remain. I'm just going to smooth either side of it and then do it in this sort of like direction. So here we have a representation of an arm. Um, obviously with your references, they'll be different and you'll go in deep. Maybe just start to refine a couple of these muscles and their incisions and how they're sort of like interacting with each other. Maybe um, the character is tensing in a certain area. So a little bit of muscle will pop out a little bit more. Um, just follow your references, maybe increase the resolution of the elbow. Just give that a nice little pop popped effect um, or come down to the bony areas and make sure that they are actually shaped like the bones are. So it's just stages of refinement refinement um, and I might release a video later which goes in depth to the sort of like the specific shapes of stuff but I thought this was a good start for you guys um, also flatten flatten area areas that are quite bony in general whenever there's tendons and bones you want to use things like the trim brush and then when there's muscles you want to use things like the clay brush and if you follow that that workflow then things are going to look quite nice so hopefully that was easy enough to follow. Um, I tried to keep it as simple as possible. Um, I'm going to be releasing more videos on a similar series. So based on the torso, the head, the arms, the hands. So make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be releasing those. I've, I've yet to make them. I'm also going to release um, content for free. So for example, any sort of base mesh that I use, any anatomy references, it'd be really nice to send that to you guys. So make sure you um, go onto the 3 d Muti website and sign up there. That's how I basically release them. I've also got... Um, Discord chat channels. So if you are having troubles with this sort of anatomy, go on there and ask some questions and then I can help you out, give you some draw overs and things like that. So keep up the work that you're doing and um, I'll see you on the next one.